Hello there everyone and welcome back to Attila Total War with the 1295 Medieval Kingdoms mod. So, I had one army in the previous video, go ahead and take Bremen. And we had one other that was pushing forwards towards Hamburg. This army has now been attacked by two full stacks and a smaller one as well. Um, and so right before us now we see about 5,000 men meeting our about 2,500. I think if I actually put, show this, yes. So we've got 2,800 men against 5,715 to be exact. Um, I decided in the first instance of meeting the enemy to retreat my force back. But the enemy followed us. And so here we're forced to stand and uh, draw into battle. They ha they can uh, field two armies at the same time, but I imagine they're gonna get more reinforcements because they still have that l sort of half stack out there. One good thing though is that my troops, most of them, I think all of them actually, all of them uh, for most part are actually better than the enemy units. I'm gonna get my cavalry out here. Be ready to strike the enemy through the flank. Same on this side. The cavalry is very much weaker than my troops. And so is my infantry. Okay, these guys are going straight for it, are they? Beware! Our hidden units have been revealed. Well then, to battle! Oh, they're going, they're going straight for, uh, for the forest. And it's, it's a weaker kind of man-at-arms unit that we're facing here. I want to make sure that we don't get the same on the other side. We struck the enemy. The crossbowmen will stop retreating and form line. Right here, and the enemy's weaker cavalry crashes into our to our spear walls. This unit is the one I'm worried about. But the plan is to have as many of the enemy units as possible attack straight into uh, the line, and then do as I usually do. Deploy. The extra troops that I have on the flank will come out and flank the enemy. So we're going to get the Crusader Knights to come around. We're going to get these two units to come enemy around and attack the enemy. To the Most of the enemy attack is now going around about here. They do like these uh, triangle attack points. I don't know how historically accurate that is, um, and I I don't know how it actually how useful it would be because that first person he's going to be facing so many more people, and still we have the interesting thing with the the, the sort of uh, the fact that there <laughs> there's so much. Uh, what's it called? There's so much um, friction from the crossbow bolts that the trees are set on fire. So the Crusader Knights strike in there. Uh, rest is going to pull forwards and then strike these guys. And then the infantry is going to continue on here. Get try to. You know what? We're going to have to go for this one. Try to save this knight unit. Oh shit, my uh, Crusader Knights is going to go for the, the enemy over there. And then yet again the enemy decides to strike our strong point and we're going to envelop them. We need something more here to envelop this force right here. I'm going to have to send out the general see about attacking him. We're going to get the we get the knights out of there. This unit can actually uh, move out of there. Okay, 
strike this one. Gonna see about getting the general around. I can get the uh, the spear to get them around and strike the enemy in the back. Striking the enemy. I'm gonna get these guys ready. Crusader Knights. Ooh, we've got something heavy there. Pole arm infantry. I could see from afar that that. Damn, that's a that's a heavy unit. That's probably something they've actually hired in. I don't think the. Uh oh shit! There's got a bloody crossbow unit over there. Oh, before I even are is able to strike the enemy. The enemy gives way. But you can see the the second part was that even more men. That's the second army coming in now. And we're nowhere near ready to take it on. Gonna pull these guys back. The enemy refuses to this is a defeat. really cool they unit. Do uh, I just want to take a screenshot of it. This is a really cool unit. Really, with these these heavy armors and stuff. I wish you wouldn't go in that triangle attack though. We could do like this. That's pretty cool. When he sort of lumbers there. Ooh, nasty. That guy just. There, there's still arrows though. There's not. They're not actually bolt looking. But that was pretty cool. Uh, okay, we're gonna throw in. Oh, is the reinforcements coming out of here? We're gonna send in these guys to help out the general. We've got the two uh, heavy sergeants. We're striking these guys. The the thing about yeah, the thing about the point deformation is that the point is obviously the <laughs> the weak point, and he's going in sort of on his own, getting absolutely destroyed. This looks really cool. When they come running like this with their with their axes, and then there's some arrows and shit flying around in the middle of all of that. Not entirely sure about that blood spurting on that guy, but something like that. Guess we can see something through there. But why don't I have any like these? Or is it is this just people you can hire? Because I, I would love to have something like this in my Imperial Army. That would be pretty cool. I think we've got enough screenshots. Let's go ahead and start this. Counter charge the enemy. Then we got this one. To come in on the flank. And then these spearmen. They can't really attack that one head on. So they're going to go and spear wall. Same over there. Cavalry, I want you out here. Okay, we crushed the, that unit. The guys over here fighting hard. We gonna, we dead. need to get rid of all of this to so somehow come here and help these guys. Okay, they're, they're charging. For the glory of God, yes. These guys. really difficult this guy especially ah oh, they've got another one of those units bloody hell the general can't really strike anywhere we've got another m these this must be a unit they recruit because they have so many of them shit um, drop the spear wall and attack Drop the spear wall and attack. Drop the spear wall and come to the center. See if we can hit this one. Get in there. I'll, the crossbows are needed to start sh shooting at that. The main battle there. See if we can get these guys to come in around there. This one to build up against these. Nice. Our knights. 
went through and went hard. Charged these guys in the back. Trying to come around there. You come around there. This is where we, we're needed. Get the, at the crossbows. Stupid crossbow cavalry. You know what? Let's get this one first and then surround this one. Before this one was able to strike, the enemy is pulled out against it. The thing is, there's the so much, so much battle stuff going on right now that I just, I want to take a look at the the main battle for a bit. But at the same time, we have so many movements and stuff being made all over the map that I don't want to lose crucial time where maybe my army could get destroyed or some some faulty decision of mine. Ooh, look at that. He just pushed the spear the right through the this face of him. Shameful display. Someone is retreating. Who? Where? We have a knight unit. Oh, the small knight unit there. Yeah, it was crushed because they pushed in so much heavy infantry right here. They pushed in some really heavy infantry. Which are those swordmen there. So they're pushing in really tough and... Oh, shit. Heavy melee cavalry. Come on, you don't want to go there. Let's hammer an anvil over here. And then go back to normal speed. See if we can get the general. These three coming in here between. Since you're out of the game now, or out of the fight in the way, you know what? Nope. Go, continue going here. See if you can help out somewhere over here throw yourselves in there you go around see if you can hit that general and you too or actually damn it get around there where are those cavalrymen yes general and the crusaders gonna charge in there spears back into the fight the general pull at Pull out the general. Get these guys to charge in. And we're going to hit another target for the general to charge into. Oh, that wasn't the general, actually. Okay, we're going to pull our knights out. It's a different kind of formation. Oh, it was actually that st stupid triangle. So that force over there is crushed. Oh, with the attack on the uh, on the enemy general, it seems as though we made quite a major impact on the enemy force here. Absolute slaughter going on. It's hard fighting. These guys have fought for a very long time and they really need something to sort of relieve relieve that fighting over there so if this flank would like to collapse that would be nice our general has fallen god the men damn have it down their weapons and are fleeing. I was worried that was going to happen last time that was that cost us I think it was the bloody crossbows I don't think it was actually from the, m the melee fighting, it was probably bloody crossbows. Is that the, the enemy general? Did we not kill him? Well, they haven't actually said, I don't think, specifically said that the... Uh, that he's dead. It's a shame the grass is actually covering them, but you can see, kind of if you scroll up, sit looking from over here, all the dead bodies and all the blood. And how the enemy army crumbles before us. It's a shame about the general though, that he fell in battle. What's this? A shock cavalry over there that I, that I forgot throughout the bloody battle. We need you guys to get here and attack this guy. 
So at this point the enemy has about 500 men left out of their 6,000 men army. And we have 1,500. But we've got this. A unit that hasn't been used at all. Since the general is dead, why don't we send his bodyguard just straight into it? God give us strength! God give us strength! We're gonna follow this charge into these very heavy pole pole arm soldiers. And that's gonna be enough to uh, hopefully send them away. Charge for the glory! The enemy unit is falling apart, they're retreating. A glorious victory wait. will soon be yours. Oh, these guys, wait. They retreated just from the general's bodyguard. All these weak mounted sergeants run away. It's a great victory. But unfortunately, it comes at a very heavy price with the death of one of my best generals. But that's what happens when we find ourselves outnumbered like this. God damn it, all these all these dead bodies everywhere. There is about well not all of the enemy died, but say there's at least four thousand five hundred men dead from them. Or maybe as many as five thousand. This is a great battle, great victory. And we'll surely oh, but it, it will only be really great if we're able to follow it up which means the reinforcement armies need to move in and siege Hamburg um, to make make sure that we can follow up and actually do something with this victory and there we are back so uh, all their armies are still standing because well this one's still standing because it's not uh, three units left this one's got quite a few. All his cavalry here gave way at the end. Kind of a bit like, you know what, I thought about it just now. Kind of a bit like how it is in, uh, in what's it called? Uh, Braveheart. When the cavalry comes in and he, he gives the signal like, Come in, cavalry, come in. And they just piss off. Um, I guess they did that because they wanted to preserve the the keep the army intact uh, so it was a tactical decision in th in this case not in the movie the movie is a b betrayal um, but I mean some fresh cavalry coming in against my very depleted and tired force they could probably have done serious work if it weren't for the fact that I guess these guys came back and then the third army got absolutely destroyed and they didn't even do uh, they didn't even do any damage to us, like they almost. And the thing about, if you look at my army, the thing was that I saw, let's see, where, where are those units? This one has killed 270 men, but this one, 387 enemies killed by this, killed or captured, I should say. This one, 336, 300, 310, and then the crossbows, we know that they killed people. They did not capture anyone. 320. 250, ah. roughly for both. And then ah. cavalry. This one's probably the highest killer. 357. Ah. I don't think we had anyone. This one was actually 380. So, um, We really need to take on warriors. So we're going to do that. But a great victory. We lost a great amount of troops on our side as well. 1,500 men roughly. But the enemy lost, as I said, about 4,500. Or did I s Yeah, I think I said that. I, s I, I maybe said about 5,000 to 
1,500. As I recall, I said it just a few seconds ago. But um, here we go. Replenish the army. Oh, so that one, he's gonna die, but the other two are gonna fall back. And this one still full stack. Oh, they're breaking off the siege uh, against the Danish separatists. They're sending a a uh, spy. No, an assassin. That's the assassin. What's he doing? He he looked like our our soldiers farted or the our army had sort of. Well, they put something smoking on the ground. And that priest is only up to trouble in Bremen. That army did not do well. First it lost its uh, its fight there. And then it... I don't know why they went here. Slayers of Burgundy. Their army was crushed. And we need a replacement general. Uh, taskmaster. What does that do? Integrity. Logistics expert. Political animal. Or rider. Well, we're going to need some new cavalry. So why not the rider? He's not very loyal though. There's only two. So maybe we should go with the Taskmaster or Norman, the Logistics ex Expert. But I guess everyone kind of starts off with two until they get an assignment. And then once he gets an assignment, it will change. Um, killed in battle, he was a rank five. God damn it. Um, fallen in battle. Killed in battle of the enemy. A rank 4 general and a rank 1 general. And uh, hostile enemy activity. Uh, what did he do then? Agent. Veteran. Allegiance. Yes. Slayer of Burgundy. Outcome success. Yeah, but what did he do? Uh, priest. Yes, he was successful, but what did he do? Oh, encourage dissent. Uh, we should see what the other one did then. Office secured. Very good. Uh, so what did he do? What did he do? Harass? Oh, so he harassed the army. What does that do then? Kill, Kills off a few soldiers? Is that it? This guy... Oh, he can be upgraded because of the armor stuff. That's what. The army needs to lick its wound. We've got this army right here. They're building a lot... They're building a second fleet. And they're actually building an army over here. I guess it's for these guys to move forwards and attack this army. But I think they'll retreat if we attack and push them. And so there's no real point there. What we need is instead this army to come up and be ready. Because they got the catapults. So they can proper, like do a proper siege of Hamburg. So they're going to be sent over here. Yeah, it kind of looks like Ready he's farting there in the forest. Isn't it? Like, or cartoonish because there's green smoke. Um, let's see. What did the Polish did? The Polish king and the Polish army has entered our territory in force. They've got some really heavy guys here. Late units. So the enemy really stepping up their technology game compared to us. And our king's army is nowhere near finished. He's gonna have he's gonna need at least four turns. Three turns for all his units. Four for a little bit of an extra. So that's gonna take a while before he's ready to face off with the Polish. So it's gonna be down to some garrison force to deal with them. What does does Bremen have? Manorial court and farm. So even though it only had that, it didn't have like the there's a garrison building you can have. Let's see, what Erfurt? What does Erfurt have? Erfurt has Manorial Court level two, which gives Imperial Knight and then three of each. Well that's a pretty sizable army actually. So that should do. Halberstadt. Is all is also gonna have something like that, so basically a full stack to defend. So that's gonna be plenty enough to hold the enemy off. Commander. Um, I guess what we can do is try to murder this guy. 
because we don't like him. 56% chance. Not that great. This little army. Assassinate. Well, 63% chance. That's a little bit better. This guy. Oh, shit. I just... I didn't even see what the presented chance. Critical failure! Our agent has utterly failed in his mission and has been wounded. Tracking to make his escape. Well, that wasn't great. I have a spy, though. But what can he do? He can... Um, I guess we can deploy him here. No, what he can do is he can disrupt the settlement by starting a fire. And it's an 80% chance. Sabotage the walls is even better. Or is there a good building he can destroy? Trade port. The abbey. Oh, it's an abbey. That means that the um, enemy won't have that great of a chance to defend the city with the garrison. We're going to destroy the walls. I don't think. See if he is able to set the city on fire. Not lost. He fails. God I damn it, all these failures. This will not do. My wits and words are yours. Um, but that's about it. Let's see. There's nothing else because I'm a bit worried because I can see that the Provence and also the Republic uh, are not or are not very happy with me together with the Lombard. So they're kind of a. I guess they're all. Are they allies? Puppet states is Naples and Republic. Oh. So the Lombards has these two as puppet states. So Lombardy, which everyone hates, even the Lombards themselves hate the Lombards. Um, they all dislike the Lombards. They've, uh, everyone in the Middle Ages had that in common, that everyone hated the Lombards. But they have... Who are they at war with? The Kingdom of Pisa and the Kingdom of Genoa. Genoa's out there. In Pisa, we don't know. They're, I guess, somewhere... Some Plays over the rainbow. Um, Duchy of Brabant is also unhappy with us. Are these still. Are we losing relationship with them? Yeah, we're still deteriorating. We're still deteriorating. Which I don't like. We should be at good terms with them since we're fighting their enemies and basically saving their bacon. But no. But they have no army, so it's not that bad. So it's a possibility of them opening up because I cannot afford another army and there's no way we're going to be able to hold off a front down there. So we need to win against the, the Saxons so we can turn against the Polish. But I have, I have a pretty good feeling that we will be able to strike against the Polish or once the Polish actually strike, I think we'll be able to hold out pretty well against them. But they have some seriously strong troops. These guys here. Um, oh, they're all high. Where did I see? These guys are late period. So they have some that are late period. But a lot of, uh, lot of high. There we go. There, the late ones. These. Those guys are going to be a problem. Is that? that uh, at the further distance, it looked like it was a woman, but it wasn't. Like hey, she had a blue dress on. And these guys. Whether or not the Bohemians will hold out. If they lose the main city. That's not good. The Duke. General Vlad. He's got a lot of stars. He only needs to regain his troops out there in the forest. And go back to save this town. How long will it hold? Ten turns more. I think they will hold against the uh, the mains of fire, but we don't know what the Polish have. The Polish could be very strong. Interestingly enough, the swords of or the Teutonic Order. Wait, have the Teutonic Order joined on my side? The Teutonic Order uh, got military al allies with our military allies with me, but they are not at war with the Kingdom of Poland. Let's do the blessings some of the Lord upon diplomatic you. What then movements. do your noble people desire of us? We desire war that you would declare against the Polish. And I would give you a great sum of money because I got a lot. How much money do I actually have? Can we see that? 10,000. 
Is 10,000 all I have? Oh, demand offer. I can offer 33,000. Let's offer, start offering them 5,000. Moderate chance. Okay, so we're gonna give them. We're gonna give them. 7,500. Wait, oh, demand. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Um, offer. 7,500. High likelihood. They can join in and then the problem of the polls will not be as grand as before. And they have we accepted. We are a realistic folk and will accept this accord even as it hurts our pride. It hurts your pride? To attack the poles? For God's sake, you're German. We, we love fighting the poles. But I, I guess it kind of hurt their relationship because they had both their armies within Polish territory already so maybe they were marching to attack someone else even though they weren't at war with anyone so it kinda seems like a treacherous move but yeah that's that's what you gotta do sometimes anyways looking at the time we're gonna end the episode right here so hopefully you guys enjoy this and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one bye